Hello everyone, today we're going to discuss navigating the layers panel in Photoshop. You should find your layers panel by default in the lower right part of your workspace. If you don't see your layers panel, you can go up to the menu bar and go window and you'll see a whole list of all the different panels. A check mark will appear to the left of a panel's name if the panel is currently open somewhere on the screen. So we see that layers has a check mark and it is visible in the lower right part of our screen. So as I go through the layers panel today, I have an enlarged screenshot of the layers panel and a selector circle that I'm going to use to kind of point out the different aspects of the layers panel while also working with the lower right layers panel here for this document. So the first thing that we're going to go over is the layer row. The layer row, we have two rows here. We've got a layer one row and a background. It's the actual row here. Um, each time we open a new image in Photoshop, the image opens in its own document and is placed on a layer. Photoshop represents layers in the document as rows in the layers panels with each layer getting its own row. Each row gives us various bits of information about the layer, and as we add more layers, additional rows will appear. Um, next, we're going to talk about the layer name. So here you'll see layer 1 and background. Photoshop places the new image on a layer when you load an image into Photoshop and calls it background. If you just created a blank document, the white canvas will be called background. Um, we can see the name displayed in the row for each layer and you can change the name of the layer by double clicking the layer name. So I can actually come over here and instead of select or circle, I can just call it circle. Next we're going to talk about the preview th layer preview thumbnail. Um, to the left of the layer's name is a thumbnail image known as the layer's panel thumbnail because it shows us a small preview of what's in the specific layer. Um, you'll see that we have the white background here and this checkerboard that actually indicates transparency. So we have layer one which is completely empty. Um, next, we're going to talk about how to add a new layer to the document. So to add a new layer to the document, you need to click the new layer icon at the bottom of the layers panel. It looks like a blank sheet of paper with the corner folded. So when we press this, and I will press this in the active layers panel here, a new layer will appear in the layers panel directly above the background layer or the last layer that you created. So the last layer I created was circle, and you'll see that layer one was now added right on top of the circle layer. Um, Photoshop actually automatically names layers for us, so you'll see that this one was automatically named layer one. So as I mentioned before, you'll see that the checkerboard pattern that indicates that this is transparency, it's clear, there's nothing on that layer. Um, so this is a blank layer one in addition to this layer in the enlarged screenshot. So next we're going to talk about moving layers which is also really really important. So you can actually go to the layer row, click, and simply drag and you'll see the blue highlight bar that appears and then you just will drop it into the new position so I can kind of move this circle all around. Next we're going to talk about the active layer. We know a layer is active when it becomes highlighted. When it is highlighted you'll see here that it is the light gray and the background layer is not highlighted so it is the dark gray. So over here on my active layers panel you'll see that I have the circle layer selected and now I can select the layers panel and the blank new layer. For the next step, I'm going to use the layer 1 in my active document layers panel here to delete a layer. To delete a layer, you need to select the layer row and then click the trash can icon on the bottom of the layers panel. 
Once you do that, it'll confirm, do you want to delete the layer? You'll say yes or no, and then the layer is gone. Once the layer is gone, there's really no getting it back unless you use your history panel. Next, we're gonna talk about copying a layer. So let's say that I want to duplicate this circle. So what I can do is I can select the layer, click and drag it down to the new layer icon, release, and now I have two circles. I'm going to delete that layer because I don't need two. And next we're gonna talk about the layer visibility icon, which is the eyeball in the layer row. If we want to hide a layer in a document, we can simply turn it off by clicking this icon um, that is to the left of the layer preview thumbnail. So you just kind of poke out the eyeball, which is kind of a terrible way of putting it, but it's, um, it's a way to remember it. So you can kind of turn off, as you can see, I'm turning off and on this circle um, here using the eyeball that is the layer visibility icon. Next, we're gonna talk about the different blend modes. Now, we're not gonna go into complete detail here because we will talk about them later in another chapter, but to select the blend mode um, to a specific layer, you can locate the drop-down menu in the top left of the layers panel, and by default, it is set to normal. So it's right here, you'll see the drop-down menu. Next, we're gonna talk about the layer opacity. We can control a layer's level of transparency from the layers panel using the opacity option directly next to the blend mode option. The opacity value of 100 and it's the default value means that we can't see through the layer at all, but the lower that we take the opacity value, the more the layer will begin to show through below. So I will kind of demonstrate this using the layers panel screenshot. You see that the opacity is 100 and as I decrease that, it comes more and more transparent until the point where it's completely transparent when it's set to zero. Next, we're gonna talk about how to group layers. So this kind of starts going into some layer management. Um, when we start getting into um, creating projects and assignments that get more and more layer intensive, we might need to start grouping our layers together. So to do that, we can select multiple layers, holding the command control or even shift. So you can see that these two layers, my circle layer and my layers panel screenshot is now highlighted. And all I need to do is come down to the bottom and click the little folder, which is create a new group. You will then see that Photoshop creates a new group and gives it the default name group one. Um, we can open the folder using the little arrow next to it to see the layers that are inside. And we can select a layer, move it out of the group, just how we would move layers around before that we discussed. And then we can move a layer into the group and then collapse the group again um, so that you can keep your layers panel a little bit more neat. Um, next, we're gonna go over the layer styles, um, which is indicated by the FX icon. Um, so it's also called the layer effects, like special effects, so FX. Um, so layer styles give us um, easy ways to add a lot of different effects to layers, like shadows, strokes, inner glows, outer glows, drop shadows. So clicking this icon will give you a whole list of options to choose from, and I'll open it here so you can see all of the different options. Next, we're gonna talk about the layer masks. Now, we're not gonna go into detail on this one either because um, later in another chapter, we're gonna get really deep into layer masks. So at the bottom of the layers panel is where you'll see the icon that looks like a rectangle with a circle in the middle. Um, believe me, after this course, you will be very, very familiar with this layer mask icon. Um, lastly, we're gonna talk about um, locking layers. As you can see here, there's a padlock actually defaults next to the background layer. 
Um, the layers panel gives us a few different ways actually that we can lock certain aspects of a layer. For example, if part of a layer is transparent, we can lock the transparent pixel so we're only affecting the actual contents of the layer, not the transparent areas. Or we can lock all of the pixels, whether they're transparent or not, to prevent us from making any changes to the actual layer. Um, we can also lock the position of the layer so we can't accidentally move it around inside the document. So there's actually four different lock options to choose from and they are right here at the top. It actually says lock kind of prompting us to the different options here. Um, so they are located just below the blend mode option. Um, from left to right we have the lock transparent pixels, lock image pixels, lock position, and lock all. So the background actually defaults to lock all. Um, and using the lock is really great as you start getting more into creating um, vector graphics and locking layers so stuff doesn't shift on you while you might be tracing. So locking layers is really um, a great thing to know about. So that's all I have today for the different layers panels and navigating the different options that are within the layer panel. Um, uh, lastly, actually, I'll throw in real quick, there is a search by kind. So if you have image layers, text layers, shape layers, smart objects, you can actually sort your layers panel by the different kind of layers, um, which we will get into later in the semester. So thanks for watching.